30 years and nothing but frustration for families of eight people who fell victim to an apparent serial killer along the Colonial Parkway. It'll be 30 years tomorrow that Cassandra Haley and Keith Call vanished. Keith's car was found, but the two have never been seen again. Tonight, his family talks about the 30 years of sadness and anger. Tonight on your side, Andy Fox has been covering this story since it broke 30 years ago. Andy. Yeah, Anita, I've learned in 32 years total covering all of the unsolved murders, there is no closure for any of the families, but especially for the families of Keith Call and Cassandra Haley. The bodies never found so cruel. We first saw Keith Call, hands up, October 1987. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yes, concert. you too. Keith's sister and brother remember their smiling Keith in a wavy TV 10 live shot waiting for you two concert tickets to go on sale. That's it's, a good memory. I don't know, it is. It's just freaking sad. <laughs> sad because six months later, we'd find the Call family on the Colonial Parkway huddled together crying. I just had a frantic call from my mom saying, Joy, they found Keith's car on the parkway. And Keith wasn't in it. It was just gone, just vanished in the thin air. The night before, on a first date, Cassandra Haley and Keith Call went to a party here at University Square Apartments next to CNU where both attended school. I think that our days and our times of our life now are marked like before Keith died and after Keith. Cassandra and Keith never found. Keith's parents would later die brokenhearted. I think it killed them early, you know, the, the stress and anxiety. I do think about this case a lot. It's the biggest regret of my career, and it's the humanity, the loss. Regrets die hard for former FBI man Irv Wells. He became special agent in charge of the Norfolk office in September 1987. Seven months later, he would learn the names, Keith Call and Cassandra Haley. We just mobilized the entire office, and uh, we work what we call a special, where essentially every resource in the office was devoted to the investigation. I think they were taken from a car, uh, marched some distance away, executed, and put in the water. Over the years, the families disagreed with the FBI scenario. He's not going to come here. Somebody else most likely brought the car here. The families think Keith and Cassandra were intercepted after the CNU party and Keith's car dumped on the Colonial Parkway. Lost time. For 30 years, we've interviewed the Haley family, the candle in their window, waiting for Cassandra to come home. But for this anniversary, they would only give us this, a gone but not forgotten letter of frustration that reads, lack of answers in the case is magnified by our feelings of abandonment by the FBI, Virginia State Police, and the National Park Service. The calls agree. They know, too, the Haley's frustration. I, mean, I want to say, let's get this done. That's what I want to say. I mean, it's been 30 years. How long are you going to make us suffer? The letter continues. Failure to prioritize this case and their lingering jurisdictional bickering have led to a stalemate where existing evidence has not been shared. I can agree with the bickering. That has been an issue. It continues. No resources have been actively assigned and no progress has been made for many years. Have you made any progress? I don't know of any. The FBI refused to do any on-camera interview responding to the letter, except to say, we are fully engaged in the investigation and actively coordinating with the state police to bring closure to all the Colonial Parkway cases. First of all, I totally understand it. We gave the Haley letter to Wells, who retired from the FBI in November 1990. Every agent has a great desire to solve his case, and particularly a case like this with so much loss. Are you resigned to the fact that we will never know? No, I'm still not. I, I always have a little bit of hope. I mean, I have to. Four couples, eight murders, two not found. What happened along the Colonial Parkway? Even the best investigators can't figure it out. The family's left to believe the bad guys got away. That part of the story tomorrow at 6. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.